Hello guys, I'm Mohammed Sadri. This is part four of the videos I am creating for using Zinc Ultrascale Plus and Petal Linux. And as you know from the previous video, um, my purpose here is to basically show you how we can use Petal Linux along with SPI, I2C and GPIO interfaces. In this specific video, I'm going to show you the Vivado projects that I have created. And in the next video, we basically build the beta Linux. So one note from previous video. In previous video, I described our test environment our test environment contains two boards, one ZCU102 and one ZTERN board. The ZTERN board is a simple Zinc 7000 7020 device and ZCU102 is a 9EG device. So I have updated the environment a little. Um, previously here I had only ELAS and for SPI, I was just returning back the, I was just connecting the MISO and MOSI signals. Now um, I have updated the design. Here I have SPI a slave and I2C a slave. And basically, here I have I2C master and SPI master. Here on ZCU102, I'm running Peta Linux. This is our main target. And so, I, I have also uh, developed a standalone software which will be executed on Zinc 7000. And this standalone software is responsible for configuring and handling interrupts coming from I2C and SPI interface. Here on Petal Linux, um, as I will show you, Petal Linux will be responsible for talking to I2C, SPI, and GPIO interfaces that we have instantiated in the PL. And the concept we show here is um, similar um, for also the peripherals that we have in the PS. So what we show here, um, how we can talk to, for example, Axi SPI, which is located in the PL, is basically more difficult in comparison with the one in the PS. So, as I said, these guys will be masters and these guys will be a slave. Here I'm running a standalone software and here I'm running Peta Linux. So, this is a simple photo of the test setup. I have on my desk basically all of the results that I will show you. They are being executed on this test setup. At this side, we have ZCU102, and here we have our ZTERN board. This is a normal Zinc device. This is 9EG Zinc Ultra Scale Plus device. And here I have the JTAG connection for the, for the ZTERN, and the JTAG connection is basically for this ELA core, this ELA core that I have here. And here, there's the extension header J3 and with simple wires I'm connecting basically the I2C and SPI interfaces to the ZTERN board and the signals are being passed over these wires between two boards both of the interfaces they are operating at 3.3 volts and um, both of the boards will come up from the SD card memory. So I have a SD card memory here and I have a SD card memory here for ZTERN. It's covered with the JTAG cable. And both of the boards, they come up over the SD card. Okay, so set that. Let's start looking at Vivado projects. I should show you two Vivado projects, one for this board and another one for this board. Um, Needless to say, um, the complete design source or design sources 
Vivado project and the software. If, if you need the complete design sources, they are available for download for you when you make a fair donation to googlia.com, which is my personal website. So here, as I said, I should show you two Vivado projects. This is the Vivado project for the Z-Turn. As you see, we have here normal processing system 7. And I have also another Vivado project. This is for ZU102. And um, here I have, for the PS, I have Zinc Ultra PS. Xilinx calls this Zinc Ultra PS. So I will start here from this Vivado project. It's actually very simple, straightforward. You can create it very easily yourself. Um, here I have one I2C interface, Axi I2C, one Quad SPI, Axi Quad SPI, and one GPIO. And each of these guys, they have their own interfaces, which are connected to here for this and these, they are connected, the pins are connected to J3. And for this one, it's connected to the LEDs on the board. For the configuration, for GPIO, what I have, the first channel is enabled. And basically, I have output. I have only output for the GPIO and only one bit. So I have a one bit output here on the GPIO. For Quad SPI, what I have, which is notable, which is important, is we are master. So at ZCU102 side, we are SPI master. And the mode of operation is a standard, which is simple SPI. So I'm not doing dual or quad SPI here. I'm just doing simple SPI. And the rest of the options, they are basically the default. When you instantiate a core, they are there. So for I2C, um, one thing which is uh, important is this SCL clock frequency, which we have kept default. I have kept everything as default here. I have not changed anything. One thing which is extremely important are these interrupts. It's very important you make sure the interrupts are connected to the interrupt input of the PS. Otherwise, your IPs won't be recognized by Peta Linux. I mean, when the Peta Linux comes up, it, it will not recognize your IPs when there's no interrupt connected. So don't forget to add the interrupts. There's nothing else special here. So this is basically the clock which is driving the entire logic I have. And it's basically 100 megahertz. And there's an Axi interconnect. These are slaves for the Axi interconnect. And I, ha I am using the uh, um, basically one Axi master port which is in full power domain, HP, HPM0 in full power domain. And if you if you watch my other videos, I can sh I, I show you several times how to create this system. And when you when you have access to your own folder, um, then you have the complete Vivado design. Address wise, all of the addresses are automatically assigned by Vivado. And um, if you don't like the addresses, of course you can change them. So basically that's it. It's a very simple and a straightforward design. So now I come to to the other design which is for our Z turn board. Um, our Zinc 7000 board. It can be any Zinc 7000. It, it, actually it can be any board. So th the only important thing is um, make sure the voltage levels are correct when you are connecting two boards make sure the voltage levels are correct <coughs> because the IOs there 
so the IOs are not necessarily 3.3 volt um, tolerant you know you, you can burn the IOs so we have the zinc PS and very similar to the other one we have a axon master interconnect and basically i have one i2c core for which i have not done anything no change nothing i have just instantiated the core and sel clock here is again 100 kilohertz and i have one quad xi quad spi which which um i don't want this guy to be master you know um so intentionally i have removed the enable master mode and i have not touched anything else here again uh, very important interrupts are connected and then um one thing that i have done i have a system ELA here and the system ELA um, is responsible for showing me what's happening on these two ports so i have a spi interface here and I have I2C interface here and this system ELA is basically responsible for showing me the signals over these two interfaces so one thing I have done uh, if, I, if I look at the system ELA configuration we have two interface slots I wanted to because these interfaces they are slow I increased the number of samples that we capture to 16,000 so that we can see something and then for interfaces for a slot 1 we have the SPI and for a slot 0 we have the I2C interface okay so this is basically our design one thing I have done is since these protocols they are slow ones they are very slow i'm driving the system ela with a lower uh, clock frequency clock you know so i have a simple clock wizard here and the clock wizard basically receives the 100 megahertz clock that i am uh, that that comes from the ps and produces a 20 megahertz clock okay and the 20 megahertz clock i'm feeding to system ELA which which is kind of enough when we test this on real hardware we can see the waveforms so these are the two Vivado projects and as we have the Vivado projects ready the next step would be to make sure that the IO assignment the pin assignment is done correctly based on the photo I showed you from the connection of two boards I have done the pin assignment for both of the projects so I have done um, pin assignment for ZCU102 and I have done pin assignment for the ZTERN board and you have access to all of these files when uh, when you, you you receive basically your own your own account to download the content so I have done pin assignment for both of them and as you are sure with the pin assignment all you need to do is to generate bit stream for both of the projects okay so for both of the projects I go ahead I generate the bit stream and as the bit stream generation is complete then um, the first thing I will always do is to check timing just take check the timing of the design make sure all of the timing constraints are met and if I want to show you so um, that may take time maybe it's better if I show it for the normal zinc board So this is the implemented design we before we go ahead always in the implemented design make sure all of the timings are met and um, so let's this guy go go ahead um, and then as I make sure 
that all of the timings are met the next step would be to export so timings let's look at the timing so and um so yeah th th these are being covered basically in previous videos obviously i did not add any timing constraint myself and here for both of the designs i'm relying on the timing constraints which are automatically being generated by the cores okay and they are really enough so there are some timing constraints being generated by the ps because we set the clock frequency there and if i'm not mistaken also the um i and spi interfaces they have a set of timing constraints and th these are enough for the design i'm running right now at 100 kilohertz clock frequency for the i2c and at also a low i think 500 kilohertz clock frequency for spi this is enough i don't need to define any specific time and constraint so as i see the timing is met the next step would be i want to export the characteristics of my hardware the the configuration that i have done on the ps the clock frequencies which interfaces enable which interfaces disable how interrupts are connected which peripherals are enabled which peripherals are disabled which peripherals exist in the pl what are the addresses for the peripherals that are existing in the pl so i want to export the information complete information of my hardware to the next step which is software because now after i have vivado um being uh, generating um, the beta stream for me after i have a ready to use beta stream the next step would be the software the one which is being ex executed here by the arm cores and it's either stand alone or it's linux in both cases i need to tell the software a complete set of a specification of my hardware and this is what we do through this export step so i say export hardware and then i just export the hardware to my lo uh, to the local project folder you can you can choose somewhere else i always do it in the laziest possible way so i don't touch anything and as you do this for both of the projects we will have a file with hdf extension being generated so maybe i can show you that file um, that file by default will be created in in the dot sdk folder so if i go to project one dot sdk folder then is basically the first file which is being created in this folder okay if sorry if you are running peta linux hmm, if you are running peta linux then um this is the only file which is being created in this folder because uh, all of the rest of the files will be inside the peta linux folder and if like here you are running a standalone system then the rest of the probably software will also reside here but anyway this file contains a complete specification of your hardware and this file is the reference for xilinx sdk or for peta linux to know which peripherals you have what are their addresses what are their configuration parameters which interrupts are enabled how interrupts are connected what are the interrupt line numbers so all of the information are here and this file will be read by peta linux as i will show you in the next video and also with by xilinx sdk so that it can generate um, the required 
PSP for the rest of the applications that you produce okay so for both of the projects for this one and for the other zinc ultra scale one um, after we have the beta stream after we make we make sure the timing is fine and the design is fine then the next step would be to export the hardware okay <coughs> yeah that's it so we go to the next video in which we use um, the HDF file specifically we will focus here we will use the HDF file to compile and build Petalinux.